Hey, what is going on guys? Root of the Mel here, coming back at you with another batch tutorial. Alright, I'm gonna get the Windows command line started up here, along with Notepad++, and we can get to doing our thing, you know? <laughs> now, in the last couple of videos, we've been taking a look at functions, and we're gonna be looking at those even more in this video. The thing is, with most programming languages and scripting languages, uh, usually other than batch, obviously, we have something called scope. And uh, scope is a sort of tactic or concept that uh, everything inside of a function belongs to that function and anything that is uh, anything that corresponds with it. Like if you had a function and then from within that function you called a different function, everything in the original function that you started with would uh, would be accessible from the function that you're called from the, uh, the from the initial function. Now verbally, that's probably really, really hard to wrap your mind around. But when we take a look at and code an actual batch, I'm sure you'll be able to understand it. The thing is, we kind of have to supply some specific commands to be able to apply this in batch. And even then, they have some drawbacks that we kind of have to address in a later video. But obviously, it's just, it's, it's just weird, and we're going to have to push through it as usual. So now let's go ahead and give this a try. We'll hop on over to our uh, script editor, Notepad++. I'm going to create a new script. Call mine script.bat. And I'll overwrite whatever's there, and we'll start off with our usual add echo off. We'll go to our main function. We'll actually create the main function. Then we'll go to the end of file or end of function. Function? Oh, ho, oh, pardon me, guys. I, I kind of have to remember I'm on the internet. Sorry. <laughs> All right, then we'll go ahead and echo out. Let's see. The uh, main function is being called. That's embarrassing. Holy crap. <laughs> Alright. Let's go ahead and create a new function. Though. We'll call this one func, and uh, go to end of file. Okay. Now, what we'll do is we'll create some new variables here, because I want to be able to show you guys that what you create inside of a, of a function is normally accessible, at least in batch anyway, accessible from any function. And this is kind of ugly, so uh, let's go ahead and fix that. Okay. <clears throat> so we'll set p, in our case we'll set p in main, and set p can be 4, we'll echo out, um, main says <coughs> p is, and then p, and then we'll call func, okay, now up in func, we can echo, func says p is p, and now we'll create a new variable inside func. I think we'll call this one, uh, how about x? Set x. x can be maybe 30. Okay. So we can echo func. It says x is x, the value of x anyway. And then we can hop right back down to our main function. And once we're done calling that uh, the func function, we'll go ahead and echo out x. Now, we normally we wouldn't want main to be able to see x. So... We're going to have to fix that with our local scope that we're going to be creating inside batch. But before we do that here, I'll show you I'll show you how things are going. Main says x is x. Okay. Now we can go ahead and save this, and I'll run our script from the command line. Script. The main function is being called, and main says p is 4. Okay, so we set p to equal 4, and main displays that. And now, func is getting that as well. Func says p is p, which in our case is still 4. And then we set x to 30. Now x is 30 and func says that as well, and main goes ahead and says that as well. But x is not being set inside main, so that's a little strange. It's being interpreted as well from inside main along with func. So we need to be able to fix this, because we don't want x to be visible inside main. So what we'll do is use some commands called setLocal and endLocal, and these two will be at the beginning and end of each function. So for func, we'll go ahead and put this at the top, set local, and then before we go to the end of the function or end of the file, we can end local. We'll do the same thing for main, and then end local right here. Now I'm going to close my, uh, my command line just in case any variables get saved or left over. <clears throat> and now we should be able to run this and see, hopefully, a difference. <laughs> we can run script. And the main function is being called, and main says p is 4. Okay, p is 4. We've declared and defined that inside main, and main says it as well, so that's fine. Now, func says p is 4. Okay, but do you guys see what's happening here? 
<clears throat> because we've already declared P inside main, and main is the one calling Funk, Funk is going to get everything that's already inside main, which is in our case, is P. So that's why Funk is able to see it even when we've created our own local scope here, with set local and local. Okay, now if we go back to our script, Funk says X is 30, which it is inside X, I'm sorry, which it is inside Funk, and now Funk says X is obviously 30, which we've already set up. But when we jump back to our main function, once Funk has ended, main says X is... and then it's gone. Because X has not been created inside the main function. It's only local to func. And that's what these set local and end local functions come in handy. But the thing is, end local has a little interesting quirk. It has a little, uh, little foible. <laughs> the thing is, end local actually deletes all of the variables that has been seen so far inside of this little local scope. So it only assume, it only looks like that the variables have been seen. To, uh, to this function and this function only. And uh, when we're trying to return a variable, obviously that can be uh, a little bit of a problem. <laughs> so uh, we'll be sure to show you guys that in the next video, but until then, you guys have got a cliffhanger. I hope you'll come back for the next video, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this one. See you later, guys. Goodbye.